Hello, physics friends, and welcome to 14.4, which I am calling reflection, refraction, and diffraction. Uh, these words, they sound very similar, and they are kind of similar in the physics sense, and we've been introduced to one of them. So today what I'm going to do is to just kind of revisit reflection, talk to you about refraction, what that is, show you a video kind of explaining it, and diffraction, show you another video explaining what that is as well. Uh, so let's get going. Uh, reflection, you probably already know. Um, when I do like a quick image search of reflection, you get pictures like seeing yourself in a mirror uh, on a on lake. When I do reflection diagram, it kind of shows like the physics sense. Um, reflection, what it is, is when an incident ray hits a medium, some of it will bounce off. And there's this thing, it's called the law of reflection. And the law of reflection says that this incident angle to the normal, the incident angle is going to be equal to the reflected angle. So these two angles right here are the same. So reflection. when a wave bounces off a medium with the same angle that it was incident at. So here's a couple of examples, just that picture that you saw right there. Incident angle equals reflected angle. We'll get into this more when we get into mirrors and reflection. There's a whole unit dedicated to reflection and mirrors. Like what happens when you have a curved mirror? Is it concave, convex? All sorts of cool stuff happens there. Uh, refraction. Here's a picture of refraction. Maybe you've seen like the Pink Floyd Dark Side of the Moon or a prism. Uh, here's a, a, a ray of light bending its way through uh, a rectangular piece of acrylic. And then you've got like a tongue depressor put in some water. So you do a Google image search for refraction and you come up with images like this. I pulled them right off of here. Uh, it's light bending or waves bending. Uh, when, when a wave enters into a different medium, it, it could be sound, it could be uh, a wave on water, it could be light. When a wave goes from one medium into another medium, it will slow down or speed up. So let's get that in. That slowing down or speeding up causes it to kind of bend. Like when I was in college, uh, one of my professors said, it's like a marching band. Imagine a marching band um, marching into a field of mud and you, if you hit it at an angle the people who hit on the the side that's going into the mud first they slow down while people on the outside are still going fast so there's a turning in in effect uh, because of that so here's a video that I found just three minutes talking about refraction giving you some examples let's check it out today we're going to talk about refraction of light refraction is when light bends when it travels from one medium to another a medium is any substance. Here I have a glass of water and a popsicle stick. I'm going to insert the popsicle stick into the glass of water. As you can see, it appears that the popsicle stick bends at the barrier between the air and the water. Refraction is caused by a change in the speed of a wave of light when it moves from one medium to another. Just imagine if you're riding your bike on pavement and suddenly cross over to sand. Your bike is going to slow down when you move from the pavement to the sand. The same thing happens with light. When light hits a more dense medium, the light wave is going to slow down. When it hits a less dense medium, it's going to speed up. The same thing happens when I put this lens in front of my face. The light slows down and changes direction or refracts, making my eye appear smaller than it actually is. Now let's look at a ray of light traveling from a less dense medium, the air, to a more dense medium, the water. When the laser light travels from the air and hits the water, the light slows down and refracts. If refraction did not occur, you would expect the beam of light to travel in a straight line. But since the light slows down and refracts once it hits the water, it bends from its original course. Here I have a large beam of light traveling through a fish tank. When I put a lens in front of the beam of light, the light will refract. 
When I move the lens further away from the light source, the light will refract to a point. In most cases, when light waves speed up or slow down, they change direction. I am shining laser light through an optic. The laser light is starting at zero degrees, but when it... You get the idea. Uh, our next one is diffraction. Uh, diffraction, when I do a quick image search, diffraction is when waves can bend around a corner. And you see here, there's an example of somebody talking. Jill is talking. And even though there's a direct barrier between Jill and Jack, if there's a hole in the doorway, the waves can actually bend around it. And here's a picture of overhead of a couple of islands, waves coming in. And you can see that bending pattern in the waves. Um, diffraction. When waves bend around a corner probably the best way I can explain it. Go over to Google, do a couple image searches for diffraction, and you see uh, that's that image that I took from you right here. Here's somebody yelling around a corner, right? You're around, you can hear people talking around a corner. It's diffracting around the corner. Um, maybe you've seen, like, at the bottom of a CD or a DVD, uh, you see these really interesting, like, rainbow patterns. Um, that happens from diffraction. And I want to show you a video here. This is a little bit more complicated, but this is a really great video that I want to show you that deals with diffraction. What is light? What is light? Light is what, light is what, what is light? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? What is light? <laughs> isn't it an element? Um, light is brightness, I guess. We have auras. We all have auras. Which are light? <laughs> yes, they are. It, it lights up the room. It makes it not dark. What's the difference between blue light and red light? The color. It goes in your eyes and then you see stuff. They range from white to red to orange to green. It's like the chakras of your body. Can you see my aura? Uh, no, not particularly right now. Is it too bright out? It's very sunny out here today. Does that make it harder to see someone's aura? Mm, not necessarily. If I was to explain it to a blind person, <laughs> right, yeah. it, would be, it would be the difference uh, you see nothing whatsoever as a blind person, whereas I see things in front of me. To be fair, the question of what light is, is not an easy one. For centuries, the greatest minds in science debated this issue. In the late 1600s, Newton proposed that light was a stream of particles, or corpuscles. He proposed this in his treatise Optics. But at the same time, a Dutch physicist named Huygens proposed that light was a wave. And this debate raged on until it was settled by the experiment I've recreated today, Thomas Young's double slit experiment. To make sure I got the experiment right, I went to the original source. With the help of Brady Heron, I managed to get into the vault underneath the Royal Society in London. Where there I found Thomas Young's handwritten notes from 1803. I brought into the sunbeam a slip, a slip of a card, card, about 1 30th of an inch in breadth, and observed its shadow, either on the wall or on other cards held at different distances. Besides the fringes of colors on each side of the shadow, the shadow itself was divided by similar parallel fringes of smaller dimensions. Wow. This is an experiment so simple that you could make it at home, and yet so fiddly that I have never seen it before done with sunlight. I was thinking about doing it in a box, like a, like a fridge box. And you could take it out on the street. Taking it out on the street. Could I possibly interview you guys for about a minute? Sure. We're doing a science experiment. What I have here is an empty box. Mm -hmm. And this is a little eyepiece where we can look in, and this is a hole. And I'm going to place this slide above that hole. And if you look closely, you'll see that there's two openings. Very yep. narrow openings side by side. It's a double slit. Now before we have a look, we need to tilt it towards the sun a little bit. So mm -hmm. we want the sun to hit this double slit directly. What are we going to see on the bottom well, of the box? The obvious thing you, you think you're going to see is you're going to see two, two lines. Two lines on the bottom of the box. And two bright bands. Two little lines. I think, yeah. yeah. I think it'll be one one line instead of two. I could expect to see the whole box lit up. It'll probably be a kaleidoscope of some sort. A bunch of colours. Probably, yeah. Rainbow, different colours. There, have a look. You so, I mean, what do you think? I mean, you, you put two slits and you let light shine through. What do you, I mean, what do you think you'd see when you look in that box, letting that light shine through onto the other side of the box? I expected to see kind of one line. 
Is that what you see? No. I see dots. How many? It's one circle. Well, there's one, there's one in the middle strongest, two either side. The two on the outside are multicolored, and the one in the middle is just white. It's kind of a rainbow. The rainbow of color as well. Quite a few colors and lots of little dots. Like there are more dots appearing. I think I can even see more dots spreading along. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I can see tons of dots now. Not tons, but I can see dots spreading across that way. So this is what they're seeing on the bottom of that box. And the question is why? Like what in the world, why are you, when you take two slits, let light from the sun shine through there, why are you seeing all these different, like, I mean, it's almost a rainbow, like just from two slits. Why is that working? How does that work? Yeah, definitely. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's incredible. And that's just nothing else apart from two slits. Two slits. That's incredible. But all we're doing is we're putting a light through two very narrow slits yeah. side by side. So how does this make any sense? There's some kind of principle involved there that the average person is not familiar with. That's the only explanation. No, I'm really confused by it, but I'd like to find out why. People were debating, is light a wave or is it made of particles? So what causes that? Well, if light were behaving as particles, you would expect them to go through each slit and just produce a bright spot underneath. So we would see two bright spots on the bottom of the box. But if light's behaving as waves, then the wave from one slit can interact with the waves from the other slit. I've got a demonstration here on a little pond where we can see this with water waves. I have two sources of ripples, which are basically like the two slits. When I create ripples with a single source, they travel out with circular wave fronts. Nothing particularly surprising there. But if I add a second source of ripples, then we start getting an interesting pattern. This pattern is created by the ripples from the two sources interacting with each other. Where they meet up peaks with peaks. So this is what you're seeing in this pattern. This is called an interference pattern. And this is um, a result of constructive and destructive interference. You'll see right here, do you see the waves are really big? This is constructive interference. There's another area of constructive interference, another area of constructive interference, and, and so on. But then you'll see right in the middle, the boundary, this is destructive interference. It's where the trough of one wave meets the crest of another, so you're getting these areas of destructive interference. Peaks and troughs with troughs, the amplitude of the wave is increased. That's what we call constructive interference. But if the peak from one wave meets up with the trough from the other, then we get destructive interference and there's basically no wave there. So that's what you're seeing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock it off here uh, and head back over. But this is what we call an interference pattern. If you have interference patterns are alternating areas of light of high and low intensity, Now this could be with sound, so you'd be sitting in front of two speakers and you could find areas where it's louder and quieter. This could be with light. You see it with a CD. Uh, when you look at the bottom of a DVD, um, diffraction, just type in DVD. Hey, I'm sure you've turned over an optical disc and you see this like rainbow pattern. It's because of that light interfering with itself because the slits are so close to one another. Um, you see, you get interference in soap bubbles. This is called thin film interference. Uh, let's try soap. There's a picture down here. But yeah, if you've ever really looked really close to a soap bubble, it's, it's varying in thickness. And so the places where it's thin, the light reflects and then the light goes through to the second layer and then bounces and then will interfere with itself. So here's an example of the light coming in. Some of it will reflect off the top and some of it will, will refract through, reflect off the bottom layer and then interfere with itself in a way. So this interference is alternating uh, patterns of color or intensity in the waves due to... Um, slits or wave interference.
there you have it. Just a few things uh, that waves are possible or capable of in our universe that we know of. Have a good day.